Hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. I have a watch review video for you today. I've been keeping my eyes out for something green. Something finally showed up, a little bit unexpected at a time that was unexpected, but I saw it. I'm thinking, yep, need green in my life. And so I got myself a green watch, white and green. Quick wrist check, it's the watch we're reviewing today, which is the Atelier Wen Porcelain Odyssey Green Edition, How Green Edition which looks like this. As always, we will talk specs, we'll do a macro view. This is an amazing sort of unique watch. Again, I needed some green in my life, who doesn't? We'll talk about the watch, we'll talk a little bit about the company, where they started and kind of where they're at right now, and all that kind of good stuff. As I typically put in the plug, think about visiting my website, watchcomplications.com. You can subscribe there, get blog updates, you can subscribe here, click the bell, get notifications. Something else I've got coming up that's somewhat related to my actual day job. For those of you that don't know, it might depend on how closely you've read some of my content on my website, but my day job is as a computer science professor, and I'm really just a programmer and I teach programming. But there's an app out there for keeping track of all your watches, which is just an excellent app. I highly recommend it. It's called Watchy. That's Watch Double E. The developer of that app is just a wonderfully nice guy. I'm in communication with him on a regular basis. But what I've decided, I have the app, and I use it to keep track of my watches. I'm going to do a review of it, so that'll be on the blog, and it'll be a video as well. I'm going to do a video review of this watch app. It's really great. But what I've done is I wanted uh, not just the watch app, which is for iOS, so if you have an Apple phone, but uh, if you have the file that it exports, which is a CSV, a comma-separated value file, I wanted sort of a full desktop experience, so I actually created sort of a web interface front end for viewing all my watches and inter interacting with them and just kind of reviewing it, thinking about what to add, what to flip, etc. So I'm using that app. I'm going to do a review of it. I've created sort of a browser-based desktop app for it myself, so I'm going to show that stuff off here fairly soon here in the beginning of the new year. By the way, Happy New Year, everyone, and this is going to be a great year at Watch Complications. I think there's a, there's just a ton of stuff that I've got coming. I've got more custom watches and builds I'm working on that I'm going to be able to show you about. I've got some new prototype stuff done. I'm going to do more 3D printing. I'm going to show some more pad printing versus sort of water slide decal stuff. Lots of options out there for creating custom watches. And I'm going to be showcasing all of that kind of stuff through at least the first half of this year. And there's going to be more watch reviews. We'll go through some more of my collection stuff. Just lots of good stuff coming here. But it is a new year. What's 2020 going to bring for my own collection? I think what I'm going to focus on this year, I have maybe one or two watches that I, I want to bring into the collection. There's going to have to be one or two that go out. Remember, I'm trying to keep my... I balance at a certain level because I'm saving up for a Grail watch. That Armin Strom is still in the back of my head. What I want to really concentrate on this year is consolidating my collection a little bit and getting it down to you know the real essentials, the ones that I am going to be wearing on a regular basis. I'm using the app to help track. Starting this new year, I'm going to use it through the whole year and see how much I'm wearing my watches and really keep an eye on that sort of thing and consolidate the collection based on that data. Data, data, data. I'm a computer scientist is what I do. And one of the really interesting things about this Atelier Win watch we're about to look at is that it's a limited edition of 25 pieces. And there aren't that many left as far as I know. And so if you want one of these, you'd have to act fairly soon because it's only 25 pieces. So they aren't going to be around very long if you want one. Another very different unique aspect of why I have this watch is because it's a porcelain dial. You pair porcelain, white porcelain with emerald green. It's just a combination you don't see a lot of. And that's one of the reasons why I thought it was worth taking a really close look at and considering it for a spot in the collection. So let's take a little bit closer look at this Atelier Win watch and see if Chinese watchmaking is taking some steps forward in terms of quality watchmaking. All right, so here we are. I wanna give you a look at it on the wrist before we take it off and start talking about the specs. And this Atelier Win How Green Edition which is part of their, what they're calling their Porcelain Odyssey line of watches. You can see it looks pretty good. Love it, love it, like that buckle. Gonna talk about that a little bit. So let's get into the details. So in terms of the purchase process for these watches from Atelier, when you purchase from their website and they come via Singapore Post, uh, shipped fairly quickly, arrived fairly quickly in good shape, 
you know, simple packaging, not sort of over the top, but very well thought out in terms of the design. I love the box, looks really cool. And I'll kind of use it as the background for the, for the actual watch. But, it, you know, this was protected simply and very well, you know, bubble wrap inside of a nice, uh, moderately sized cardboard box. And then when you open this up, you've got uh, a watch roll sort of thing with a nice leather. And then the manual that has, you know, the information about the, the watch and stuff and the company. Paris meets Beijing. Inside of here, you've got, you know, things like your warranty certificate, you know, when you bought the watch, serial number, sort of the stamps of approval. And in terms of the production of the watch, all the information about taking care of it. So a nice little manual, like I said, then the watch roll, pop this open and the watch is inside. There was also an extra strap included in the box for me. One of the things about a, a company like this is you kind of wonder, well, what's the support and service going to be like? Well, my interactions with them so far have been excellent. So the original serial number I asked for on this was 210. So the numbers are going to be between 200 and 225 because it's a limited edition of 25, okay? The watch I wanted, uh, you know, they were going to sh send it to me, but they do a last QC check before it leaves in the post. And that watch that I had asked for that serial number of did not pass that last QC check. And so they had to send me a different one. They let me pick a different number, which I picked. This is 216. You can see it there, number 216. I like even numbers. And one of, the, one of the reasons I like this watch, and you might see on some of my other watches, I'm, I prefer to see the even numbers if there is a choice between even and odds. What they did to sort of make up for the fact that I didn't get the initial one I wanted because of a QC issue, they sent me an extra strap. So in their Porcelain Odyssey line, one of the straps that's been a little bit unique and, and popular from what I have read about and understand is this salmon strap. So they threw one of these in. Now, it doesn't necessarily go with this watch very well because of the green, but I can find a watch that this will fit on because it's a standard 20 millimeter strap width and quick release as well, which is nice. So they, you know, in terms of the, the support and the quality control, one, I know that I care about quality control because they weren't going to send a watch that didn't pass that final check out the door at the last minute. And that's a really good sign to start with. But also they included an extra strap to sort of make up for that inconvenience, as it were. Okay, so a little bit about the company. They started in 2017, from what I could gather. They had their first watches, the G, which is a blue watch, and then the How White Edition, which has blue printing. It's the same thing as this, except it's got blue printing instead of the emerald green. And those they launched on Kickstarter in like fall 2018. They shipped to spring 2019. And then this was sort of a fall slash winter 2019 uh, edition. So they've not been around for a long time. They started on Kickstarter like a lot of micro brands are doing nowadays. And they are a risk in that sense. But I thought it was worth it in this case, particularly because the green is unique enough and the porcelain is unique enough. I thought it was worth a try. So this is the How Green Edition. How means like without blemish, pure, which is sort of the inspiration behind their dials and their manufacture of these, you know, again, hard to manufacture porcelain dials. See the printing there is quite good. Don't worry, we'll look at the macro view. Now to describe some of the concept behind this watch, you've got some symbols on here. This is uh, Yu and Mao, which speaks to times of the day, like five to 7 p.m. and five to 7 a.m. from what I can understand. Um, in, in the reading about it. And so, it's, you know, it's sort of a, a timekeeping motif that's printed here on the dial along with, you know, the, the minute and the hour markers. And along with that on the case back, which by the way, is one of the best examples I've seen of embossing from any company, let alone a micro brand, is this, what looks like a mythical creature of sorts, but this is the Kun Peng, or, you know, again, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that quite correct, but this is a character that is a sort of an allegory for yin and yang, but you've got the kun, which is this aquatic character, and the bird, peng, and so this is, again, sort of an allegory for the yin yang, and this is two parts of a whole. Again, that same sort of concept that it's a, it's a bird, but can, you know, transition between being a bird and an aquatic being, and that's the motif that they've gone with on the back. You can see they've got their name here, Atelier Wen, it's got four case back screws and the number. I really like the simplicity. You know, a lot of companies are putting all kinds of things on the cases like, 
you know, sapphire crystal, the water rating, you know, all that kind of stuff here. They've got the company name and then number. And I just love that simplicity. And what's really great about not having all of this distracting writing around the sides is that the embossed center gets to take really truly center stage and it just draws your eye. It's just, it's a beautiful case back design. Like it's hard to beat this. It's just wonderfully done. Uh, the polishing around the sides is pretty good. Let's talk specs, let's talk specs. We'll get back to the case stuff in a second. So the case is 39 millimeter. It's just about 12 millimeters in height. It's 11.9. It's as advertised. I will say that, you know, when it comes to, again, what's a bright spot in Chinese manufacturing, everything I've seen so far about what they've listed on the website about this is accurate. So 39 millimeters measured it myself. It's 11.9 uh, millimeters high, so just shy of 12. The lug to lug on this is 47 millimeter. So it is in that sweet spot for, you know, most people when they're looking for a dress sized style watch. Another really nice thing is that they have gone with a standard size. The lug width is 20 millimeters. So tons of straps um, I already have, I can use along with this, easy to find straps. They are quick release. Again, another great choice for a small brand. And the weight is 82 grams. So it's not crazy heavy. It's just the right size. So part of the story behind this company and their watches is that they are Chinese manufacture and they're proud of it. Yes, they have this sort of French design influence, but they are Chinese manufacture. And again, they are absolutely proud of it. And so what they've chosen to do is go with high quality materials, high quality process to sort of, you know, throw a wrench into this whole notion that nothing of high quality in terms of watchmaking can come out of China or anywhere in Asia generally, right? I think there's, you know, really great Japanese movements. I'm a big fan of those, particularly Seiko and Grand Seiko movements. And, you know, this is another example uh, of that sort of Asian watchmaking that I think is, you know, taking a left turn from what people are used to. And, and that's a good thing. So along with that, the movement in this is a Chinese movement. Again, people think lower quality. Specifically, the movement is a Peacock SL3006. Now, the Peacock SL3000 is a Chinese clone of the ETA 2824-2, sort of the most common movement and clone movement on the market, but they have got their own variant of that. So for this Peacock SL3006 that they're using in these watches, what they've done is one, they've customized them, and I think they're using an entirely different quality control process for them. So that's one big thing. They've also added an extra platter from what I can gather on the inside so that they can move the seconds from center down to six o'clock. This movement is also meant to have a date wheel, which is one of the things that I'll, I'll talk about in terms of the time setting and, and winding here in a second. It is an automatic movement. So it's got a rotor in there, keeping the mainspring wound. It's not loud or anything. It's nice and quiet. It's about a 40 hour power reserve. 32 joules and 28 eight beats. So it's you know it's fairly standard in terms of being a clone of the ETA 2824. It's got all those nice aspects about it. Now, one of the cons about the movement is that because it is meant to support a date wheel, is that in position zero is winding and you can wind it if you want, of course, but um, being an auto, just shake it a few times, put it on the wrist after you set it and go, is when you pull it out to position one, it's basically dead space. Okay, what would normally be a gear that would be letting you quick change the date uh, is not there. So you've got some ghost space there and then you can pull it all the way out. It's got the hacking feature. So the seconds will stop and you can set the time and then push all the way back in. So there is that little con that you do have position one has this dead space because the date wheel isn't there. The case is Japanese 316L stainless steel. Again, keeping that theme of being proud of where the materials are coming from and the manufacturer of the watch, but it is a good high grade quality stainless steel. The embossing on the back, which I already showed and mentioned, some of the best that I've seen. They're particularly proud of this. It's got sort of like a bead blasted look to it on the embossing it matched with the polished around the side. Just really good visual contrast, some depth there. I will say that when you're measuring the height, the height is gonna somewhat depend on where your uh, calipers are hitting here on the back. Again, it's just a little under 12 millimeters tall. It's five atmospheres of water resistance, so 50 meters. So it's got pretty good depth rating. 
a little bit more than a lot of dress watches, which are usually three ATM. This is five ATM. It's got a domed sapphire. Again, they've chosen to go with high quality materials. A lot of Chinese manufacturer watches have a K1 or mineral crystal of some sort, but they have done a domed sapphire with AR treatment on the inside. So again, you want that porcelain to shine through. Important to have some AR coating. I really like that the the interior uh, ring around the dial is sort of scooped downward, which again sort of brings and draws focus to you know the star of the show when you're wearing it on your wrist, and that is the porcelain dial with that excellent green printing. And of course, when you've got it off the wrist, it's hard not to be drawn to and sort of look into the depth of this particular embossing on the case back. I showed you the salmon strap already. This is a what they call a nubuck leather. It's almost like a suede feel on the outside and then sort of your standard leather feel on the inside. They've got some writing in here with the company name and logo. I will say that I, I really love this shade of green. Of course, it matches the, the writing on the dial. And I really like the buckle design too. What I've found is that the tongue on the buckle might be a little bit too large for the holes that have been punched. And so it can be a little bit difficult and easy to, to tear at the holes on the, on the strap because the tongue's a little bit too large for it. So that's one thing I would say about the strap. It is fairly comfortable. It'll be interesting to see how long this material, this new buck leather, that's again, sort of suede-like holds up over time, particularly because the edges on the buckle are sharp. Kind of see it here. You can kind of tell it's sharp edge, the tongue sharp edge, a little bit more rounding uh, or softer edges on the buckle, I think would be a little bit more appropriate for this style of leather. And, you know, in terms of also taking care of the leather as you're, you know, taking the watch on and off. So that's another thing about, you know, that I would change about it perhaps. But I do like the straps, I really do. So let's put on the macro lens and I'll talk the big pros and cons while we're taking a really up close look. All right, so as we are taking sort of a really up close macro view, I want you to see, you know, the quality and the blemish freeness of this porcelain dial. Try to get some good reflections. Of course, porcelain has this sort of glistening surface to it. So what are the big pros? Obviously, the porcelain dial and this emerald green matched with it. The blue is really pretty too. I mean, it'd be a hard choice um, for a lot of people, including myself, it was a little bit of a hard choice. Do I get the blue um, printing or this green? I went with the green because, well, again, green is something you don't see quite as often, but also because this is a limited edition of 25. The others were, I think, runs of like 250, if I remember correctly. You see the printing is nice and thick to the point that it's raised a little bit. See their logo there. You can see it's nice and crisp. The hands are rhodium plated. Again, another nice, unique quality touch. Sometimes they look silver, sometimes they look black, of course, depending on the lighting that you're getting. You know, symbols, you can see there's, there's just no imperfections, at least that I've been able to find as I've looked around at it. It's just extremely, extremely well done. And that's hard to do. You're going to end up scrapping in production, you know, a half dozen dials for every one that comes out good. So it's an expensive proposition making porcelain dials. And they chose to go that route. And that's admirable. So yeah, big pros. Porcelain, emerald green, the case itself with this just unique and awesome embossing. The simplicity that they've chosen just put the name and the number and letting this take center stage that sort of mythical bird and aquatic being. It's this beautiful bead blasted look matched with the polished case sides. See the crown there. The crown is fairly easy to, to grasp and wind to kind of get it started when you need to, which is nice. It, it could be a little bit better, maybe the groove's a little bit deeper, um, but since it is an automatic, it's not you know a huge issue. I was a little bit unsure about the, the lug design. It's okay, I maybe would have made these a little bit thinner, not quite as wide, but you can see the transition there between the brushed on top and then sort of polished on the, the beveled edges and then, and then the sides. So there's some contrast there as you kind of move it around. The only part that's brushed is, is the top of the lugs. 
again, just something different to give you some visual entertainment as you wear it. Again, maybe would have rounded these a little bit more myself, but you know, no complaint there. You can see that there's this interior ring with a case that sort of scoops down. It's brushed, which then leads to the glossy surface of the porcelain dial. I love how the printing looks when it catches the light. Again, sapphire crystal. Now in terms of the cons, the ghost setting at position one because of the, the date not being there is one that I've come across. Also, I mentioned, you know, the buckle. It's a little bit sharp on the edges and then the tongue maybe a little bit big for the holes in the strap. That's a little bit inconvenient. But the other main thing that I've come across is that in terms of the timekeeping, you know, it is this Chinese movement. It's a customized movement. They've gone through some quality control. The beat rate I mentioned is 28.8, and that's that's a good beat movement, 4 hertz. And it does keep within their timekeeping specs that they've set for themselves, which is plus or minus 10. I tested it in five or six different positions, and it's kept, you know, plus or minus 10 in every position for long periods of time. So it is that, but it has a very low amplitude. Now, the best way to sort of give an analogy for that is, of course, you want your heart rate to be in an optimal spot, you know, not too slow, not too fast. If it's too fast or too slow, there's some weird effects that happen. And in case of an amplitude being too low, what happens is the balance wheel gets a little bit more out of whack and that can affect the timekeeping. So you want an amplitude of a modern mechanical watch is going to want to be between 275 and 315. That's sort of your optimal range for an amplitude. And this is about 225, give or take five. And so the amplitude is quite low. What that means is the timekeeping might have some issues. That also speaks to maybe the mainspring having some potential issues. It could be that it's not greased quite well enough or that maybe there's some dirt in there or something like that. Uh, like I said, they've gone through some more robust quality control than most Chinese movement manufacturer, but you know the low amplitude does speak to maybe a potential issue. We'll see. We'll see how it goes over time, but that's just one thing I did want to point out, at least mine that I got specifically is, again, the amplitude was around 225 and that's quite low and could lead to some timekeeping issues, but I shall keep an eye on it. The other thing is that, yeah, it's a young micro brand and it's, you know, this Chinese manufacturer is much better in terms of the look, the design, uh, the quality, the movement itself too, but what's the service and support gonna be like in the long term for this? You know, that remains to be seen and that is a risk you take with this sort of a purchase. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about a watch from Atelier Win, but I absolutely love this look. I love the case. I love the dial. I love the colors. I like the straps. And yeah, I'm glad I have this. And it's only 25 pieces. So if you want one of these, better get it. If not, you're going to be stuck with the blue, which you know what? Isn't a bad color to be stuck with. For those of you that watch uh, the channel or read my stuff regularly, you might know that, you know, the small seconds is my favorite complication. That's just another big pro for me in terms of this watch. I love the small seconds of six. And these rhodium plated feathered hands are you know, a great little addition too. Maybe in terms of design, what I would have done is made the small seconds hand also feathered to match the minute and the hour. That's me. So that's an up close look at the Atelier Win number 216 of the Porcelain Odyssey, how green limited edition of 25 pieces. Beautiful watch. So there we have it, a unique bright spot in the world of Chinese watchmaking with a little bit more quality, a lot more effort, and a little bit more thought into design than what usually comes out of most of the factories or places or brands and things when we think about Chinese watchmaking. Let me know what you think about the Porcelain Odyssey series of watches, whether it's the green edition, maybe you have the blue or the white, or maybe you're thinking about getting one, but any kind of feedback, happy to get. The general consensus in my brain is I wanted some green, it's got porcelain dial. It's just a beautifully crafted, I think, piece of Chinese watchmaking. Yes, I'm saying that. It's a beautifully crafted. The case is, I think, immaculate. The porcelain really is blemish-free. I, I think it's just a unique addition. Yes, it's got some cons, like every watch has, at least in my opinion. There's not, at least I haven't come across one that's perfect yet. But uh, maybe, maybe the Grail watch. Maybe the Grail watch is perfect.
But anyway, I think they've done really well if you're thinking about something that's different and if you're after a porcelain, sort of this uh, vintage dial look. It's hard to beat the case embossing for a solid case back. I've not seen anything quite like it before. Porcelain is just so unique and different and hard to do well and hard to do right and blemish free, but they've nailed it on this. Um, the, the strap collars, just unique and different. I think it's got enough pros that it's worth taking a look at. It's worth considering. I don't know what these are going to be going for, like on the secondary market, but you know, it, it's, a, it's a micro brand that it's worth at least considering if you're looking for that sort of vintage porcelain dial look and you want a case that is you know sort of dressy you know styled for lots of different occasions and it's just different there's lots of good things about it and i think you know taking that risk a lot of watches have risks this is one of those that well okay what's the service and support going to be like whenever it does need service it's a you know a little bit of a different type of a movement what's it going to be like in the long term having this watch not sure but i'll be sure to keep you updated this is a brand that you shouldn't just cross off because it's Chinese. It'll be interesting to see what they come up with, you know, in the future as they look forward to, you know, other watches. I'm assuming they're going to continue manufacturing watches. But again, like all watches, it's got some pros and cons. I think the pros way outweigh the, the, the cons. And so this one has definitely got a spot and I look forward to wearing it on a fairly regular basis. The only issue I can see, um, besides maybe, you know, keep an eye on how that timekeeping works, is... What am I gonna wear with it? Because I mean, it is green, and you know, I went with orange today. This looks pretty good. You know, green and red. You know, usually go together. But yeah, what am I gonna wear? But again, happy new year, everyone! Thanks for following and listening to me here on Watch Complications, and looking forward, really looking forward to all the stuff coming in 2020. Keep watching.